Welcome to episode 49 of the Sourcing Challenge Show. I'm your host, Mark Lundgren. In this episode, I sat down with Alina Moyes from Romania and asked her about how she got started in sourcing. It was like a not funny story, maybe normal uh, uh, path for, uh, for a recruiter or for a sourcer. Um, I have a degree in psychology and uh, my dream was to work as a, as a psychologist actually. But um, at that time, when I finished university, it wasn't very lucrative, so <laughs> I wasn't paying enough to, to uh, have like uh, enough money for to pay my rent. So I decided it's not it's not for me. And um, just like the the next area that was close to my studies was HR and recruitment. Um, I got a job in a recruitment agency in uh, Bucharest, very small, like at the very beginning, it was only me and the owner of the agency working there, <laughs> you know, like, like uh, selling the dream, the big, uh, we are becoming a big agency and so on. So there I started uh, with tech, um, tech recruitment, tech sourcing. So I did everything from scratch, learned a lot of uh, sourcing on LinkedIn because LinkedIn was the, the main uh, let's say domain there um, at that time and um, after that when once I said that like I, I know a lot about technical recruitment it's time to <laughs> time to move but of course I was only at the beginning uh, I moved in Ireland um, I lived there since 2011 until 2017 so a lot of uh, years worked in uh, in Google, worked in Workday. Um, I learned a lot of stuff uh, like at Google, for example. I learned a lot about how the candidate experience make a huge impact and a huge difference between uh, the companies. Um, and with Workday, I developed my sourcing skills, met a lot of great people. Uh, Mark as well, we are colleagues for, for a few months and uh, worked together. It was a great environment, great people there. Uh, being a startup, you learn, you need to adapt very fast, work very fast in a very fast paced environment as well. Um, and uh, you, we were actually like uh, selling the company, uh, a new company that was born um, there and we were trying to sell uh, our jobs to Europe market or um, sometimes outside of Europe. So it was a good, uh, good learning process there as well. Um, moved back to Romania and had a recruitment manager position um, and was in charge of a team of recruiters, but also doing some tech, uh, tech sourcing, tech recruitment. Um, after having this uh, job as a lead, um, being a recruit, I was recruiter sourcer. I decided that I really like the, what I really like the most is the sourcing part. So um, I was like lucky enough to taste from all the sides, slices of um, a recruiter person, but I decided that I need sourcing. So I started to, to look for a job and I was like lucky enough to get a position within GitLab. Uh, GitLab like uh, is the largest remote, all remote company in the world and uh, I work there in the technical sourcing team. Um, since May 2019, since like mm -hmm. years, like seems like uh, <laughs> yesterday, um, it's at the beginning I was quite reluctant being all remote company was something not totally new concept but was, I was never in a, in a company mm -hmm. that was fully remote. So I was a bit uh, anxious at the, at the very beginning. But after that, like when I started actually interacting with team members, my colleagues, I, I decided I made the right choice. And um, what's they, the big differences for you then from having to work, uh, well, having worked for Google, which is very much, especially Google Dublin, very much like people on site, uh, same yeah. thing with Workday building up a completely new development office mm -hmm. and then yeah working with a, a company that is well born remote what's the what's the big differences in the way you work and, and the people you work with yeah well the big uh, difference is that you need to really really organize very well you know with being remote a lot of people say like well, that's easy you, you don't need to worry about anything you don't need to worry about commute or uh, being in the office at times so that's true uh, you don't need to worry about that but if you are not organized, I think you won't survive. So uh, I'm not saying like with us being in North Day or in Google, you, do, you don't need to be organized, but uh, especially in GitLab where you don't, you have a lot of autonomy. Mm -hmm. If you are not uh, planning very well your day, your week, uh, you won't deliver, mm -hmm. you won't get the results. Um, 
all the things, almost all the things we have in our calendars are optional. So you always can skip those meetings. But at the end of the day, it's about results. It's about people that are trusting you to deliver uh, at your best. And um, I think the, uh, working with uh, GitLab learned me a little bit more about um, how to plan better, how to actually target better results in shorter time, <laughs> let's say. Uh, so yeah. I'm not saying it was, was great experience with the other company, but with uh, GitLab, it's a bit different from, uh, from this point of view. Like you are your own boss, mm -hmm. but you are also responsible for uh, your results. Yeah. What's your go-to tools and you yeah. know, how do you, how do you kind of get the results that you need to get? Yeah, so um, I mostly source for backend engineers position. I have a development manager. Few, I had few development managers position that I was responsible. A uh, few support positions, senior support roles uh, that I'm working at the moment. Um, it's uh, I'm most, mostly recruiting for Ruby on Rails developers with uh, different other skills that will need to be had, like some database, some, I don't know, uh, infrastructure uh, knowledge. Um, and for development manager, when I say development manager, they need to be technical to have a background in development plus the experience in people management. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, they don't seem very, very difficult position. And also we are like very, very, very lucky to um, have all, almost all the world to mm -hmm. source from so we are not limited to europe or emia we are like we can go anywhere uh, basically we can where we can find good talent for, for our jobs um again it's a matter of you trying to understand the position working very closely with your recruiter with your hiring managers and uh, to get the best uh, the best people uh, you can find um everyone is like really really eager to contribute to help you so if you ask if you ping your hiring manager like can we have a quick chat about the role i'm trying to understand better or something like they will be like very fast to answer or um to help you so that's something that uh, i like a lot they are very humble mm -hmm. also it's not like uh, if you're feeling the need to uh, disturb them <laughs> in uh, i don't know uh, in, in the evening or very early in the morning they are always very responsive and that's always good. No, especially with like covering the whole world, you have a lot of different time zones. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So you work a lot uh, asynchronously with uh, mm -hmm. other other people, and uh, it's also something that you need to adapt mm -hmm. because maybe you need support from your team member that is in another uh, time zone, and um, you need to understand that. Like, uh, but and also that what another aspect you can search for help in. Um, other teams, other colleagues mm -hmm. that can um, that can help you. So, it's even though we are not a very big company, it's like mm -hmm. more than one thousand and two hundred people now, we are still like uh, um, very closely working together. Mm -hmm. So, and what does your tools look like? What kind of uh, what kind of tools do you have? Um, you know, what's your process when you get started? As a tools, like of course, everyone is really familiar with uh, with LinkedIn Recruiter. You know, we use this. Um, it's like it's the bread. Uh, sometimes of the recruiting, but um, I always try to discover new tools. Initially, I try to discover tools that are for free, mm -hmm. you know, tools that we don't pay for it, <laughs> you know. Um, I work a lot depending on the position. Um, I, I use Amazing Hiring mm -hmm. uh, also. I use uh, Social Talent. Uh, that will help me to build more, um, no, I don't know, more uh, specific search uh, strings for different positions. Um, I use Crystal, um, mm -hmm. a Chrome extension that, you know, will help you predict personalities uh, of your client, uh, of your candidates, uh, help you to build your emails and something like, like that. Um, I try to use a lot of Chrome extension that will make me work more efficient. Yeah. I don't know, not work a lot on a sourcing string. I just if a tool can do that for you, I will search for that tool and try to implement it and uh, share it with the team. Um, tools that you can use for uh, finding um, email address, I don't know, contact out mm -hmm. uh, that I use. I used to have like uh, IEV. Uh, that application that will help you search uh, people on different websites and, and see their contact information also. Um, 
Bolt, there is another uh, tool, uh, Chrome extension that I use um, in order to, to build ball and strings. Um, and I don't know, it's a lot is depending on the, on the position I'm on. Yeah. So sometimes, you know, you, you go fast, you need fast results, you first go to LinkedIn. But other times, if it's a niche position, you'll go to, I don't know, Stack Overflow or GitHub, do some, some researches and such there also. Um, it's, it's depending on uh, what you find that works best after mm -hmm. you did your research on the role and, and so on. So. Um, and even though now you're, you're kind of searching all over the world, uh, but yeah, being based in Romania, I know you've, you've done a lot of work in Romania as well. Um, yeah. If somebody either like me or uh, more and more companies are actually coming to Romania, uh, if we have to start looking in Romania, what, what do we have to think about? What's the, what's the differences in the market there? And, you know, where can we, where can we go wrong if we, if we come and, and try to do the same thing as we always do? I think what's changed in the last, say, five years with Romania it used to be a very cheap market compared with, I don't know, Ireland, UK, or people uh, or countries from uh, US. Now um, we have a lot of uh, people that are uh, developers and technical people that are looking for salaries that are uh, compared with uh, uh, other other countries more more developed, let's say. Mm -hmm. uh, so in terms of the salary. We are a bit lower than UK or Ireland, but not not, not so much. <laughs> so uh, and also uh, what I noticed, a lot of people from from Romania on technical side migrated from uh, Romania in uh, in other countries. Mm -hmm. So um, now what I'm seeing, uh, a lot of people are, are very very juniors in terms of the skills. Um, so if you're looking to um, start a company and you're looking for more senior developers, I, I would be a bit reluctant in the recommending this. Uh, I'm not saying there are not people, good people left here in Romania, but what I know this is I was uh, recruiting in Romania for a while. I know there's a lot of senior people uh, moved away and are not Romania is not their first choice mm -hmm. it will be it will be like that mm -hmm. um, I'm not so familiar with when it comes to recruiting in sales or other areas yes. so there maybe the salaries are still um, more lower than uh, in other uh, in other countries but with tech I think um, yeah we, we need a more in-depth analysis in terms of making a, a good recommendation now being uh, very experienced in, in working remotely and yeah working with a with a remote only company do you have any uh well other than what you already said do you have any other kind of advice to people who i think especially now uh, are, are all working from home and have to get used to to that kind of reality now I think it's becoming more uh, a trend with this. I, don't, I know it's not the most uh, happiest context <laughs> uh, we could uh, learn but that, but um, I think you need to, you need to adapt fast. Uh, you need to set up a, a plan, always like uh, start every week with the plan, what you need to do, mm -hmm. uh, what, uh, and reduce time for the meetings if they are not necessary. I think you can always avoid having a 30 minutes conversation that uh, can be sorted by, a, I don't know, a message by a, a Skype or a Slack. Um, that's something that I learned and I appreciate a lot here within GitLab. So always have an agenda before the meeting. And if there, you don't have it, enough items to discuss, uh, cancel the meeting and just use that time in doing some uh, uh, proper, <laughs> proper work. <laughs> uh, so I don't know, like, try to stay organized, block time in your calendar for the things that needs to be done, I don't know, by the end of the day or by the end of the week. And um, structure your schedule depending on on your needs and always uh, sync uh, with uh, with your manager with your lead in order to be sure that you are completing your object you're like um, I don't know achieving your goals and mm -hmm. uh, you are uh, um, aligned with the, the um, targets you have to deliver especially being remote sometimes maybe you are not maybe you are not I don't know you don't have the most recent information mm -hmm. and you always need to be uh, up to date with uh, updated on the on the targets on the goals you have you and your team have that's probably the biggest thing for a lot of companies as well is that they're used to having people in the office the team sit together it's easy to kind of say what your expectations is so at least have that yeah. 
you know, people think they know. How do you yeah. kind of, what kind of targets do you have and, and how do you manage that, your work alone to kind of make sure you reach your targets? We are lucky enough with uh, like for, for our managers uh, structured very well our, uh, our work in terms like uh, for every month we know what, how many, I don't know, how many prospects. Prospects means how many candidates you need to reach out in mm -hmm. order to make one hire, for example. So uh, depending on the hiring needs, we have like for one, for example, for March, we need to hire uh, every, every source that need to hire have two or three uh, hires on mm -hmm. tech side, for example. On April, we'll have three hires uh, per month. So depending on the number of hires we have each month, we will have uh, a number of um, candidates we will need to reach out and uh, make them um, want to work within uh, within GitLab. Um, we have like, uh, for example, I have weekly meetings with my managers discussing uh, my progress, discussing if I have any blockers or um, how can I contribute to the other other mm -hmm. projects, I don't know, improving candidate experience or depending on what's um, on our plate at, at that time. That's the biggest difficulty for a lot of managers to kind of see it like how do I make sure that I, you know, put targets in place that, yeah, that people can actually want, want to achieve yeah. but also that they can plan for. Um, yes. and, and very much, yeah, breaking it down to not just saying like, oh, you need this number of hires. If you don't control that whole process, if you can say, well, what, what does that mean from a, you know, how many people do you need to identify? How many people do you need to actually, you know, put into the process, um, depending on what kind of month it is. So no, absolutely. I, I, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's on metrics. As, and I think you can, if you have the data, you always can rely on, on information, on those type of information in order to be successful. And especially in a remote environment, it needs to be clear. You need to have your objective and to know what to focus on what to focus. Look, Elena, if, uh, if people want to stay in contact with you and, and kind of see, see where you go from here, um, how can they best do that? Yeah, I have my LinkedIn profile and Twitter. Uh, I try to be uh, more active on Twitter, reposting and reposting, but uh, being on, on LinkedIn most, most of the time, I think it's easier uh, to find me. So Alina Moise, I can, um, it's my uh, name on uh, LinkedIn. Perfect. Well, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, I look forward to, to seeing you soon again. Yes, thank you very much for your time, Mark, and in inviting me. If you like this episode, please consider sharing it or any of the other episodes with a friend or a colleague who might be interested as well. And consider subscribing to the channel, which will help us meet more people um, and grow the community.